And now, the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical with Bulletin for July 1st. Well, here we are. We are now at the halfway point of 2021, and the only named system still active is Rayoni. Uh, we also have potential Tropical Cyclone 5L as well as the remnants of Enrique, which have practically dissipated at this point. 37 storms have formed so far as we enter day 182. It's day 31 of Atlantic hurricane season. A potential tropical cyclone 5L was designated by the National Hurricane Center earlier. Could become a hurricane as it passes through the Caribbean, and a lot of islands are in the path of this, so those there in the Caribbean should be monitoring the system. In the eastern Pacific, there is the remnants of Henri K, hardly a center to track at this point. Uh, of course, five tropical storms have formed so far as we head into day 47 of hurricane season. Nothing on the radar for that basin. Here is what's going on in the western Pacific. In Vest 95W, we have raised to a 30% chance of development. It's likely it's not going to be until towards the South China Sea where it develops. In the meantime, there's also a Philippine Sea AOI that could form uh, as it heads towards the northern Philippines next week. In the North Indian Ocean, there's really nothing going on right now, as there should be. We're now entering an another month gap in terms of North Indian activity. What you usually see in this month, or maybe if one or two months in the depression at best, really nothing that is expected to become named anytime soon here. There is the Atlantic Satellite. You can clearly see potential tropical cyclone 5L down there east of the Antilles. You can also see what used to be 95L, although chances have completely gone to zero, and that is now inland pretty much in the Antilles and will probably die out as it continues back into the Caribbean. In the eastern Pacific, you can hardly tell what used to be on K, now going into Baja, California. Uh, not much really going on except for that little convective berth that it used to have. All that, that really is pretty much gone at this point. Nothing going on, and of course, there is still nothing to trade to the Central Pacific. Here's the view in the Western Pacific. Not really much expected, really, with 95W in the near future, considering the fact that its center is completely exposed, really. Uh, and it hasn't really gotten to the point where it can develop that convection necessary for it to become a tropical cyclone. Uh, not many models support development of this anyways, but we're still giving it a generous 3% chance for right now. And of course, something could be forming there soon anyhow. North Indian Ocean, and of course, that monsoonal activity going on in the Bay of Bengal, while the Arabian Sea remains practically devoid of everything. So, uh, usual picture from there, nothing expected anytime soon at there, at Basin at least. Here's the floater of potential tropical cyclone 5L. It's getting itself more organized. Uh, still got a little more to go before it can be deemed a tropical storm. Of course, if it does, it will get the name of Elsa and become the earliest fifth storm of the season on record, uh, beating her of Edward said in 2020. Here is the sea surface temperatures. The eastern Pacific remains pretty much around 27 to 28 degrees uh, for a large portion of the basin, uh, 26 to 27 out west. In the Atlantic, you're seeing more of those 27 to 28 popping up, although there's a little bit of a cooler area where 90 or 5L is going to be entering, so it's not going to be the warmest temperatures, but it will be sufficient enough for development there. Gulf of Mexico, of course, looking warm as well as the Gulf Stream. Um, North Indian Ocean, we're still looking at those 28 degrees Celsius temperatures there. Uh, not much has changed on that uh, sea surface temperature fund, but of course, nothing that is conducive enough for development given the other environmental conditions. Same with the Western Pacific, 30 degree patches there, but really nothing that is utilizing those conditions to that full extent. And with the Southern Hemisphere, uh, it is of course winter there, so it's truly really not expected that you're going to be seeing anything there, unless you're Rayoni in the South Atlantic, which of course is now beginning to die off. In terms of sea surface temperature anomalies, same picture as we have seen the last few weeks, that cold pool that has gone from southwest of Hawaii all the way into the Baja California and California area in general. Uh, the subtropics are looking warm in the Atlantic as well as the main development region as a whole. And of course the western Pacific is looking pretty warm as well. On this day in 2010, uh, we had Hurricane Alex which had pretty much just made landfall as a category 2 hurricane. Of course, this is powered by Cyclone History. You would have noted that this was actually a Category 3 on 
uh, 2020's TWB for this date, but we have since reanalyzed it further and we no longer think it was a major hurricane. Uh, just some analysis trivia for some of y'all who have been tracking with us for a while. But you can find our Cyclone History on our Twitter at Cyclone History if you want to find more graphics that they produce for these historic storms. Well, with that, we are imminently getting our next name for the Atlantic. Elsa is next, followed by Fred. In the Eastern Pacific, it is Felicia, followed by Guillermo. And we don't care if it's July in the Central Pacific now, we're still waiting on honing whether you like it or not. Moving on to the Western Pacific, the next name there is Infa, followed by Sampaku. We could be seeing that from one of those two AOIs in the next week. The next name in the North Indian Ocean, probably will not be seeing that for a while, will be Gula, followed by Shaheen. In the Southern Hemisphere, we have now entered the second half of the year, which means new names to the Southwestern Indian Ocean. The next two names there are Anna, followed by Batsarai. In the Australian region, it's Patty, followed by Ruby, and in the South Pacific, it's Cody. We will be back with live tropical weather bulletins probably starting tomorrow.